Hello aspirants, welcome to UPSC World Current Affairs. Today is 14th March. Today's current affairs topics are Temporary Protection Directive, Mandatory Testing and Certification of Communication Equipment, MTCTE, Ukrainian Foreign Legion, Pal Dhadva Massacre, Age of Sexual Consent, Karevas, Paramganga, Biomass Burning, and two awards which was given by a Labour and Employment Ministry, Vishwakarma Rashtriya Puraskar and National Safety Awards. And finally, BBIN Motor Vehicles Agreement, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal's Motor Vehicle Agreement. Let's get into today's episode. First, Temporary Protection Directive. Why it is in news? Uh, recently, due to the ongoing war, over 1.5 million people fled Ukrainian in the first 10 days of fighting. These uh, responding to this uh, European Union member states made the decision to activate its temporary protection directive. So temporary protection directive is an initiative of European Union. So we'll, dis we'll discuss what is temporary protection directive. So what is temporary protection directive? So what European Union Commission describes temporary protection under temporary protection directive as so in um, temporary protection directive the temporary protection means exceptional measure to provide immediate and temporary protection to displaced person from the non European Union countries and those unable to return to return to their country of origin. So. Um, this is the first time that European Union has inc invoked temporary protection directive due to the war in Ukraine. So what are the futures that uh, if, it, it, if it activates temporary protection directive is so it will give permanent residence for the duration of the protection which can last up to one to three years. So they can get access to employment social welfare accommodation or housing medical treatment education for minors these are not for uh, higher education this is only for uh, minors so uh, they'll also get opportunity for families to reunite in certain circumstances only there is provision in uh, temporary protection directive that uh, you can also return return to displaced uh, their country of origin unless they committed serious crimes in European Union countries that pose the threat to um, security from the benefit of temporary protection accessing these temporary protection if they committed some serious crimes they, they cannot go back to their countries they have to they are punishable under the law so important points in this topic is uh, which of the following initiated or which uh, temporary protection directive is an initiative of which of the following they'll give you options like breaks like, like something like that you have to select European Union unions and this is the first time with reference to temporary directive protection directive uh, they'll give you options the first one is the, this is the first time that European Union has invoked the temporary protection directive and they'll give you options they'll give you some features you have to select from that Pal Dadwa massacre. This ma this massacre's name is derived from two villages on uh, in which the massacre happened. So we'll discuss why it is in news and we'll discuss basic information about Pal Dadwa massacre. So why it is in news? Recently, Gujarat government marked 100 years of Pal Dadwa killings. Before this in incident, uh, recently Republic on Republic Day, uh, it has been featured on Gujarat State's uh, tableau also. So we'll discuss what is the Pal Dadwa massacre. Nearly thousand tribals, Bill tribals basically were killed uh, in Pal Dadwa massacre. This took place on March 7th, 1922. That means exactly 100 years back in two villages. Those are Pal Chitrayar Ch Ch Chitariya and Dadwa villages of Sabarkanta district. It was then part of princely state called either. It is now in the Gujarat state. So when did this happen? During the Amalki Ekadashi just before Holi, villages had gathered on the banks of a river here as part of a key movement which was led by Motilal Tejavat. This movement, the a key movement was all about to protest against land revenue tax that is Lagan. This is imposed on peasants by the British land, British and feudal lords. So a paramilitary force called Mewad Bill Corps raised by these param paramilitary forces are raised by British 
open fired on the gathering while british claimed that only 22 people were killed bills believed that nearly 1200 to 1500 of them killed so uh, important points that may come in the exam are um, uh, pal dadwa villages are located in uh, which state like it is in gujarat and uh, the main motive of this is to take part in ak movement and this ak movement was led by motilal tejavat so what is this movement all about to protest against the land revenue tax so who which paramilitary force the british um, which was raised by birit it is uh, it is mewad bill corps these are the important points ukrainian foreign legion why it is in news what is ukrainian foreign legion we'll discuss so uh, over 4 over 500 indians across the country including veterans have uh, submitted applicants applications to volunteer in, uh, in, to join international legion created to fight russian forces in ukraine this was uh, according to some diplomatic sources so what is ukrainian uh, foreign legion it is also called as international legion of territorial defense of U- ukraine so this is voluntary foreign legion military program that means any foreign countries some members of foreign countries can participate in the vo- can volunteer uh, in the legion in the to defense against to defense ukraine against some foreign forces so this is totally voluntary foreign legion so this was created by government of ukraine at the request of president volodymyr zelensky to fight the russian invasion of ukraine so this uh, ukrainian foreign legion basically functions under territorial defense squad there is a defense territorial defense squad in the military of ukraine so this ukrainian foreign legion function under this this squad so um, this is one of the several voluntary battalions formed since 2014 and uh, what is india's response is there is it il- is it legal to join any foreign uh, uh, military if it if they are in uh, indian uh, armed forces we'll discuss now so uh, so far one indian has joined the ukrainian ukraine um, international legion as of now so according to indian domestic law it clearly states that such an act is punishable under chapter 6 section 121 to 130 of the indian penal code this is uh, offenses against the state so they are severely punished under the section this section uh, committing depredation on territories of power at peace with the government of india so what are the important points uh, is it allowed to participate in this legions or not uh, they ask like that so it is uh, dom- uh, according to indian domestic law it is clearly punishable under the section as uh, there is a name in uh, ukraine foreign legion ukraine like that they cannot ask uh, it is whether it belongs to which country or not age of sexual consent so why it is in news recently philippines raised its age of consent from 12 years to 16 years until now it had one of the lowest ages of consent in the world so what is age of sexual contest it with this philippines new law the new age of consent remains lowest in angola yeah, presently at 12 years of age of consent so according to data provided by the world population review japan has a age of consent at 13 years countries like china germany italy brazil have it as 14 years in united states it varies from state to state in some states there will be there will be 16 17 like in some states 70 18 so united kingdom 2 has 16 years as its age of consent so what is about india according to pokso act um, it defines the pokso act defines child as anyone below 18 years of age so any anyone involved in sexual activity with child is considered sexual assault and punishable under the law so um important points in this topic is uh, which of the following countries have lowest uh, i i mean i mean arrange the following countries do, um, according to the age of sexual consent and uh, according to pokso act um, what is the age limit uh, for sexual consent it is 18 years karevas so what are karevas why they are in news uh, kashmir's highly fertile alluvial soil deposits called caravels are being destroyed in the name of development these are highly fertile soils alluvial soils alluvial soils means there were previously water in this uh, 
upon these soils so after what water receded they become soil that soil are called alluvial soils this karevas are one type of alluvial soils we can see this is these are kareva soil so we will discuss what is karevas the karevas in kashmiri dialect means elevated table land as this is on the high land on the elevated land these are in the kashmiri dialect known as karevas so um, these the karevas in kashmiri valleys is some thick lacustrine deposits these are which deposits lacustrine deposits they were uh, they, they can be found on 367 meters height so these cover the area between jhelum alluvium in the north pir panjal mountains in the south so we can see this is a pir panjal mountains this is jhelum alluvium in the north so we can we can find the karevas land here in the in the between these as a as um, as a valley so how are they formed they are formed during pleistocene period which which lasts 2.6 million years to 11700 years ago so a uh, pirpanjal range blocked the natural drain in the region this region's natural drain is drain is blocked by this pirpanjal region so uh, forming uh, due to this blockage it formed a lake in between these two this lake spanned 5000 square kilometers over the next few centuries as water receded in this region they formed karevas making as this became a valley and for uh, karevas formed between these two mountains so what are the interesting facts about karevas uh, famous geo tagged uh, kashmiri kashmiri saffron is grown on this karevas this kashmir uh, saffron is received geographical indication gi tag in 2020 and also another interesting fact is srinagar's airport is built on damodar kareva in badgam badgam is a town in um, kashmir so um, karevas in this region is damodar karevas uh, taking taking karevas of this soil uh, they built srinagar airport so important points is uh, Uh, karevas are uh, which deposits they are lacustrine deposits and um, if this is for uh, something for general information how they are formed and uh, another important point is kashmiri saffron is grown on which of the following soil like kareva soils of lacustrine deposits and srinagar airport is also some of the uh, one of the important point mandatory testing and certification of communication equipment mtcte so why it is in news uh, recently telecommunication engineering center tec in collaboration with the industry it has organized a skill development training program for uh, rural girls so what is mtcte as the name suggests it is um, for communication equipments the man it is um, mandatory for testing and certification so uh, government of india has notified mtct in the year 2017 under this scheme all telecom equipments whether they are imported or indigenously manufactured are to be tested and certified before their induction or sale in india uh, this is for safety emi or eci and technical requirements so basically all telecom equipments um, are to be tested and certified before their sale before their induction so about what is telecom telecommunication engineering center tec it is a body under telecom communication commission so it is a um, tec is a nodal agency of department of telecommunications of ministry of uh, communication and information technology government of india its headquarters is located in new delhi so it is designated authority for implementation of mtcte uh, that is uh, ma mandatory testing and certification of equipment uh, com communication equipment so what are the important points uh, in which year it has been um, notified government has notified it is in 2017 so um, before sale it can be before sale or before induction so uh, what are the another important point is uh, whether they are imported or indigenously manufactured which of the following telecommunications ex equipments need to be certified before their induction uh, only imported ones only indigenously manufactured ones which of the following both whether they are imported or indigenously manufactured they must be tested and certified if they ask about telecommunication engineering center they'll ask about whether where it's its headquarters its headquarters located in new delhi 
so on the what is the designated authority for implementation of mtct it is telecommunication engineering center that's it so biomass burning so recently the center has clarified that act of biomass burning which would majorly happen in the haryana and punjab state as not, would not be criminalized farmers may get incentives if they adopt new best practices so what is biomass burning it refers to burning of living or dead vegetation this is basically done during a land clearance on land use if they want to change the usage of land uh, like they want to change from groundnut to rice they will uh, burn the previously remaining crops that is that comes under biomass burning so it refers to burning of living or dead vegetation this includes forest agricultural waste this is uh, very important agricultural waste grasslands and burning of biomass biomass for fuel so this can be natural or man made if they ask whether biomass burning is natural or uh, only man made do no it is um, both natural and man made this includes human initiated burning of vegetation for land clearing and land use change if they want to clean that land they'll burn that land which was previously vegetated so this also included uh, natural due to lightning also lightning fires also uh, few lands may get burnt this come this also comes under biomass burning so what are the alternative methods that can be up um, Uh, applied if they want uh, if they want to use it for land clearing and land use change or they can co fire in the thermal power plants they can feed stock for ethanol and biogas plants brick cleans also also uh, one of the alternatives packaging materials also so what are the disadvantages of biomass burning it releases large amount of carbon solid carbon particles and greenhouse gases so it also releases carbon monoxide which is very dangerous so biomass uh, burning biomass for electricity also produces nitrogen oxides like nitrogen dioxide and nasty cancer causing chemicals param ganga so what is param ganga why it is in news so we'll discuss now national super computing machine nsm has deployed param ganga Uh, we'll discuss what is param ganga param ganga is a super computer which is uh, located at iit roorkee it has super computing capacity of 1.66 petaflops so what is petaflop one petaflop equals to 11051 operations per second uh, a quadrillion so it is designed and commissioned by cdac center for development of advanced computing under phase 2 of nsm national supercomputing mission the system uses a lustre parallel file system and it uses operating system of centos 7x so what is supercomputer actually so it is a computer with high level of performance as compared to general purpose computer the purpose the performance of supercomputer is commonly measured in flops that is uh, floating points operations per second so one petaflop equals to 1015 operations per second so as this is floating points this will be measured instead of uh, the performance of supercomputer is commonly measured instead of million instructions per second so instead of million instructions per, per second they are uh, calculating with floating points operations per second so what are the interesting facts about supercomputer the japanese fugaku is the world's most powerful supercomputer it reaches 442 petaflops currently uh, what is capacity of uh, param ganga it is 1.66 petaflops and india's fastest most powerful supercomputer has the capacity of 3.3 petaflops it is not param ganga it is param pravega so what are the important points which of the following is the world's most powerful supercomputer reaching 442 petaflops it is japanese fugaku uh, which uh, it reaches 442 petaflops india's powerful supercomputer is parama pravega uh, and uh, if they ask about parama ganga it is of uh, it is of supercomputer at iit roorkee it reaches uh, supercomputing capacity of 1.66 petaflops it is all these um, supercomputers are designed and commissioned by CDAC under phase 2 of building approach of national supercomputing mission BBIN motor vehicles agreement MVA 
Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal's Motor Vehicles Agreement. So why it is in use? What is BBN? What is its Motor Vehicles Agreement? So India, Bangladesh and Nepal finalized an MOU with for implementing BBIN Motor Vehicles Agreement. So what is uh, it doesn't include Bhutan. It continues to opt out of MVA due to re the reason we'll discuss now. So what is BBIN MVA uh, for the regulation of passenger personal and cargo vehicular traffic among these four South Asian neighbors. What is its main aim? It is its main aim is to boost regional trade and connectivity. It was actually signed in the year 2015, 15th June only at uh, BBIN transport ministers meeting in Thimpu, Bhutan. But uh, during that time it was rejected by Bhutan's uh, upper house, Bhutan, Bhutan parliament's upper house in 2016. It has requested a for a cap to be fixed number of vehicles to be entering its territory that means it has requested uh, how many vehicles should be should enter to its territory to its territory due to pollution concerns bhutan primarily takes severe measures against pollution uh, it is one of the healthiest nations on the planet so uh, about bbin it is a sub regional architecture of countries in the eastern south asia a sub region of south asia it includes india bangladesh nepal bhutan so it meets through official representation of member states to formulate implement and review across areas such as water resources management connectivity of powers transport and infrastructure this motor vehicles uh, agreement comes under transport and infrastructure Vishwakarma Rashtriya Puraskar and National Safety Awards. So why they are in use? We'll discuss one by one. So Union Minister of Labor and Employment Bhupendra Yadav presented these two awards that is Vishwakarma Rashtriya Puraskar and National Safety Awards. So what is this awards it, it is about? It is presented by Ministry of Labor since 1965. Um, who operates these awards? It is DGFA SLI. That is Directorate General Factory Advice Service and Labor, Labor Institute. It is located in Mumbai. This operates these awards. And what is DGFASLI? It is a technical wing and attached office of Ministry of Labor and Employment. It gives technical advices to workers and management in the factory. So we'll discuss about Vishwakarma Rashtriya Proskar first. It is previously known as Shramavir National Awards. It is given for outstanding suggestions given by workers and that suggestions are implemented by the management of factory during the previous calendar year. So it means the which was the suggestions which was given by workers were implemented in the year 2021 or 2020 will be given in the year 2022. So suggestions should be regarding these suggestions. These outstanding suggestions should be regarding these uh, examples like improving the quality productivity safety health of industrial workers or conservation of environment in industrial premises so what is about national safety awards these are given these are the awards given in recognition of outstanding outstanding safety performances on which uh, terms on which areas it is industrial establishments construction sites ports and installations under atomic energy regulatory board so what is the main objective is to stimulate and maintain the interest of both management and workers in the prevention of accidents. So what are the important points in these topics? The Vishwakarma Rashtriya Puraskar and National Safety Awards were given by which ministry? It is uh, Union Minister of Labor and Employment uh, and uh, who operates the award? It is uh, DGFAS LI. Uh, if they ask about this thing, it is about outstanding suggestions. Vishwakarma Rashtriya Puraskar is, is about in recognition of outstanding suggestions given by workers and this is about outstanding safety performances. These are the important points in this topic. Today's question of the day. Temporary protection directive recently seen in news is related to which of the following? BRICS, NATO, European Union, Group of Seven. Please write your answers in the comment section below. Please participate. Even though you know, please participate. Please write your. Uh, please write it in the comment section below. It will help us a lot. It will help you to remember a lot longer. 
thank you for watching guys if you have come to this part this for you might have liked this video please give thumbs up it will boost this video to reach new people to reach more people please give um, like please click that like button and um, if you have any suggestions please write it in the comment section or ping me in instagram or facebook uh, and also follow us on instagram for beautiful design current affairs summary uh, and also follow us on uh, telegram for current affairs summary and uh, more importantly please download the pdf below it uh, please make a uh, file out of this uh, it will be very handy it will be very useful in the current affairs revision uh, you can revision you can revise all the things within one day for whole years if you have this materials uh, you can uh, revise these things within a minute and this is very easy so please download this pdf and make it as a file thank you for watching guys please share this video with your friends or um, those who are preparing for this exam um, thank you for watching we'll see you tomorrow